good morning. morning. Welcome on this rainy Sunday, and I have a a number of announcements that I will try to make shorter than the actual service itself. Um, First of all, I know that many of us who have been around St. Philip's for a short time or a while have been sort of um, in the midst of uh, thoughts of uh, grief and sadness over... um, of Brunza's death on Friday, and want you to know that I think all of us, collectively, whether we know it or not, have been joined together in that communion of saints with prayer for Bruns, giving thanks for his life and celebration for all the gifts that he's given us and the ministry that will really continue in this church because of his presence. So um, thank you for all your prayers for Bruns and his family and for the clergy who've been tending to him as well this, these past couple of weeks. Um, there's an e- the email will go out to the parish tomorrow, but his service has been set for Thursday at 3 o'clock with visitation from 1.30 until 3 o'clock in the parish hall and then burial uh, following the service at Natchez Trace. So um, welcome any and all, and I think it will be a large service and we may have guests and visitors, so plan accordingly, and I hope to see many of you there on Thursday as we gather together um, as the body of Christ giving thanks for, for Bruns. Um, the Reverend Deacon Dexter Branscombe's service will also be this coming week. It will be on Saturday at 2 o'clock. I'm sorry, I can't get things straight. With visitation at 1 o'clock and interment in the columbarium immediately following the service. Um, so we have a priest and a deacon who have transformed lives and their home place is St. Philip's. And for that, we give great thanks. Um, This coming week, there'll be some sales, final sales, I think, for the Saving Grace benefit. Um, Julie, will you raise your hand? Julie, see her after church for details. For right now, that she will, she'll be around and she can help you buy tickets to this, this uh, benefit, which benefits Grace House, those living with HIV and AIDS. Um, this is Celebration Sunday, <laughs> and even in the midst of some of the sadness that surrounded us, there is joy and there is celebration because Bruns is with God. Bruns has, has seen for himself the mysteries that all of us have to look forward to. And so when I get sorry and when I get sad, I think about what he's seeing right now, what he's doing right now, and in that same sort of train of thought, I give thanks for all that we have seen in our lives and all that we have been given. Today is Celebration Sunday where we remember before God and before this parish those gifts that God has given us first and we return them to God in the form of of, of support, financial support to St. Philip's. Uh, In your bulletin is a pledge card and we hope that you've been thinking about it and saying prayers over this and how you might support the church in this coming year. At the end of the uh, service today, we will not process out, but after the final hymn, we're going to ask all of y'all to process up onto the altar and to lay your gifts on the altar as an expression of your thanksgiving. Um, uh, David will play some fancy traveling music, so um, that'll be your cue. Don't be shy. It is every year a joy for me to see the surge of people coming up to do that. Now, if you are here with us for the first time or just visiting or passing through, you are not obligated to put a pledge on the altar. We would never turn something down. But we think it's also a visible reminder of the support that this church has for the church and the community to see all of us um, with joy um, giving support to to this parish. So watch that and see, and I hope that you'll be transformed in the middle of it. After you... uh, Lay your pledge on the altar. After you leave, we, will have a, we are having lunch in the parish hall for everyone, whether you've been here for, the, for 10 minutes or 50 years. So please join us. It is a, our gift to the parish. It's going to be crowded and it's raining. So go on in. If it's a line, just find a seat, okay? And then when the line shortens, you can get in and all of that. The food has been blessed. So y'all just surge in and, and, uh, and avail yourself of the fabulous food that has been pre- prepared for us. Um, And then last, um, welcome to all who are our visitors, our newcomers, those who have been with us the first time or first several times. We are delighted that you are worshiping with us here this morning. Um, If you are not familiar with our tradition, please know that all are welcome to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the communion. When the ushers indicate, please come forward and gather around the altar rail. You may stand, uh, sit, wait, you may stand or kneel as you prefer. 
the bread will come by and we'll, we'll offer you the bread in your cupped hands, which you may consume at that point, or you can wait until the chalice of wine comes by. You may dip your wafer into the wine and consume it, or, not both, or you may take a sip from the chalice. If you would prefer not to receive communion at this time or not to receive the wine, please just cross your arms over your chest. Come forward anyway, because we'd love to have you. And then one of the priests will give you God's blessing. We are delighted to have all, all, and know that all are welcome. Thank you.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be your kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said, Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances, that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you were about to cross into and occupy, so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you so that your days may be long. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently, so that it may go well with you, and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children, and talk about them when you are at home, and when you are away, when you lie down, and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house, and on your gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from Hebrews. When Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the bloods of goats and bulls, with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, sanctifies those who have been defiled so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. One of the scribes came near and heard the Sadducees disputing with one another, and seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, this is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. morning. 
It's a joy to be with you today. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, and let me tell you, I'm glad to see a lot of faces that I don't know, because it's been 17 years since I worshiped regularly in this space, so it's good to see so many faces. I'm Brian Ponder. I'm canon for finance and administration, and sometimes gospeler these days. Uh, but it's a joy to be home. Uh, it's a joy to be amongst family and friends. And I tell you, it's a daunting task to stand here um, knowing of the great losses that this parish has realized um, the last couple of weeks, and especially this week, um, with Dexter's death and Bruns' death. So know that I am certainly attuned to your loss and I feel it, and I give great thanks this day for their courage and their witness and their tenacity and their wisdom and their perseverance and their strength and their humility, but probably more for their humor. Uh, they were two great men of humor, and um, it's an honor to stand where they once dwelled. Today's uh, scriptures are, I would say, very familiar to all of us. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, your God, is one. These are the words that encapsulate the daily prayers of our Jewish brothers and sisters. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, your God, is one. Today also is a day that we find ourselves uh, celebrating, right? Even in the midst of loss, even as, and especially as we gather as family uh, for stewardship, and, and that's really why I'm here, so I'm going to get to that. Don't, uh, don't think I'm not going to talk about stewardship today. But, um, but I want to do that in, in the context of both the, the Shema, and, um, and a little bit of my personal story and, and how I found myself here. Um, and I want to do that starting with the image of uh, a tree, and in particular, a small acorn. Um, I think his name is James Hillman, wrote a book in the mid-90s called The Soul's Code. Uh, it's a book that... Uh, has a, a lot of uh, Jungian psychology and is kind of well beyond me. But one of the images that he holds out in uh, that book is that we are all on a journey. Uh, we are all people who have been claimed uh, and, and part of our experience is living into the claim upon our lives. Uh, and the way he frames it is by simply saying, we're all called. We're all called to do something. We're all called uh, to something beyond ourselves. And we live into our giftedness when we understand our call and our calledness. But the way he couches it is at its very beginning. And he uses this image of this acorn that grows into uh, one of the largest of trees, if it's hardy and, and, and tended, or sometimes even, even left uh, to its own devices, uh, which can be I its own kind of thing. But he uses the image um, in a different way, saying that as tall as this tree grows, uh, part of the soul and the rootedness and part of our own experience 
is understanding the depths at which the tree grows as well. So there's much more to the tree than what you see on the surface. And then he kind of takes the model and turns it on its head, saying that when he thinks of a tree in this way, it's as if the tree grows from the heavens. And instead of us being a a people who need to grow up, which we hear so often um, in our culture, just grow up, or being raised up, that we're really called to be a people who grow down. Finding rootedness. Reaching for sustenance and the substance of life. St. Philip's is one of those places, uh, and it's a big place, of rootedness for me. Even though I haven't worshipped here regularly uh, for 17 years. It's a place that I look back on with great fondness. Um, And as I look out here, I see lots of surrogate moms and dads and siblings in the faith. Each of you who have touched me in so many ways and formed me in my journey and my own trajectory. So a question that I have for you on a day like today, which is Celebration Sunday, when we think about stewardship and how we fund our ministries and how we keep the lights on and how we reach out into the world, is where was it that you first realized that your life was on a trajectory? Where was it, and if you may not be able to point to a particular uh, moment in time, but where was it that you realized your life had purpose and meaning? I suspect for many of us, we find our rootedness or a big part of it here as well. When I uh, think back on my times here, I I think um, quite fondly of my time as an acolyte. Um, I think of my acolyte masters and at that time teams and teams of folks. And I realize here uh, in 2018, uh, long after uh, Craig Gates was here as as rector, that I'm looking more and more. like Craig used to. I don't know if I want to channel all of that, but, um, and sorry, Craig, for uh, saying that. But, um, you know, I I, I think of all the the clergy who have had a profound mark on on my ministry and in my life. Um, I think of my Sunday school teachers. Um, I think of my EYC leaders, some of whom I've seen this morning uh, on the way in. I think of altar guild chairs, and I think of our wonderfully gifted musicians who have always been here and will always be here. I think of the holy and where I first began to start realizing just what is the holy. When I talk about my, um, my spiritual journey, and it's been a long time since I've kind of put it to paper or revised it, but when I think of my own sense of call, um, I can't honestly say that I had a mountaintop experience or a dark night of the soul. And for a long time, 
I wrestled with that because I was like, the clergy I know are some real ringers, <laughs> you know? They've had these kind of mountaintop experiences or some of them have, you know, come from some pretty dark places to have uh, this experience and insight into uh, what it is um, to be clergy. Uh, but for me, it was just kind of a steadiness, uh, a day-by-day -day kind of, uh, I won't say boring, you know, I, I, I have never considered my life boring, but just uh, a call that was revealed um, in the midst of the everyday and the mundane. Um, and, and more than a call, I would call it a knowing, a growing sense of this trajectory uh, that I sometimes could steer and maybe navigate, but more often than not, I had to just give myself over to. Giving myself over to something much larger, a vision much larger, an entity much larger. And it was one of, I think, the most profound realizations when I could actually get to that point. Uh, and one of the most comforting moments of my life. And truth be told, a moment that was scary as hell. Friends, today God is working in your lives. And that may come through a mountaintop experience. It may come through the darkest night of the soul. Or it may come through the humdrum and everydayness of ordinary life. Where is it that you have realized in your day and upon your life that you are on a trajectory. As we gather as the body of Christ, uh, many of us do it uh, week in and week out, or sometimes twice a month, maybe once a month, however it is that you regularly attend this place. Uh, but most of us do it in the context of a Sunday morning or afternoon experience. But if you're involved in the life of this place, you know that so much more exists than just an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and a half on Sunday morning, uh, plus Sunday school and, uh, and that evening service. This is a place from which the saints are dispatched into the world to be God's heart and hands and feet revealing Christ to the world and encouraging them to find their own sense of homing, home, and rootedness. As you think back on the times in your life when you have met the holy, when you have seen the face of God in another, when you have known without doubt that there is a God and God has a claim upon your life, I'd ask you today as you make your annual commitment uh, to not only acknowledge that, but honor it with a pledge. If you believe that God is working in your life, Take a leap of faith, maybe into the unknown, so that God may be glorified all the more in this world. Now, I'm a finance guy these days, but here's the secret. I don't have a finance background. So when we talk about church money, I get as nervous as you do, <laughs> all right? 
Um, but on the other end of things, in an office at 118 North Congress Street in Jackson, in a few weeks, I'll get to start crunching numbers as we build our budget for um, the diocese. And part of your commitment here helps in ways that you know and probably have never imagined. We support the national church, but closer to home, we support the ministries of Camp Bratton Green and things like Happening, things like Curcio. We support things like uh, the Honduras Medical Mission, the Sudanese congregation that meets over at St. Andrews. Uh, so what you're doing here in your commitment is not just a local endeavor. It's far-reaching. It reaches churches in this diocese who might not otherwise have a cleric uh, if it weren't for your support. Uh, it reaches churches that might not be able to continue to have their doors open, but for your support. So it's not just the rootedness here and the tree that we see above, but the depth of the roots that grow much further out and in much more fruitful ways. I don't know if I have a whole lot of words of wisdom, but I do want to acknowledge this and at least mention something of the gospel since, you know, I don't get to preach every Sunday these days. But there's one little nuance that um, I think is quite profound um, in, in today's gospel. And this is a little bit of a shift or a little bump in, in what I had planned on, on saying. But when we hear the words from Deuteronomy, uh, the Shema, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And we hear that we're to love our Lord with all of our heart and might and strength. There's a little bit of a turn when we hear it in Mark's gospel with the addition that we are to love our God uh, with all of our mind. Perhaps more than anything else about St. Philip's is that I have appreciated that I've never had to check my mind at the door. I've never had to stop asking the questions, even though our gospel says everyone else was afraid to ask questions. Um, I think the two go hand in hand. Uh, because it's in those questions, it's in that discernment, it's in that sense of unrestfulness and unknowing that I think that we are all the more likely to encounter the holy. And we do it in community. It's through this engagement, when we agree, when we disagree, uh, when we just kind of throw up our hands and say, we may never know. Uh, that kind of trust, uh, that kind of community, that kind of unity, and I'd say, again, trajectory, is what faith is all about. And it's also about the other, because we hear Jesus not only say that this search for the knowledge uh, and love of God, but of neighbor. So I'd like for us in that spirit to open our prayer books. Uh, if you would, y'all thought you were going to get off the hook with questions and answers since there's no uh, renewal of baptismal vows today. But I'm going to ask you some questions from our catechism. Page 854. And I promise I'll end with this because I know we're hungry and we want the meal here. 
and we want the meal over there, all right? But I want to focus today, uh, before I finish, on these two sections, uh, the church and the ministry. Page 854. I'm going to ask the questions. If you'll please uh, answer with the responses. What is the church? The church is the community of How is the church described in the Bible? How is the church described in the creeds? Why is the church described as one? Why is the church described as holy? Why is the church described as Catholic? Why is the church described as apostolic? Why is what is the mission of the church? That's an important one. I'm asking it again. What is the mission of the church? How does the church pursue its mission? Through whom does the church carry out its mission? Who is that? All its members. All right, very good. All right, the ministry. Who are the ministers of the church? The ministers of the church are lay persons, bishops, priests, and deacons. What is the ministry of the laity? The ministry of the lay persons is to serve Christ and his church, to bear witness to him wherever they may be, and according to his What is the ministry of a bishop? The ministry of a bishop is to serve the Christ of the What is the ministry of a priest or presbyter? The ministry of a priest is to serve the Christ in the church, particularly as pastor of the people, to share the vision of the church, to proclaim the gospel, to convince the sadness, and to bless the fair heart of the Lord. What is the ministry of a deacon? The Finally, what is the duty of all Christians? To come together week by week for corporate worship, to work, pray, and give for the spread of the kingdom of God. What you do through your annual commitment today will do just that. 
You are kingdom builders. You are on a trajectory. God has made a claim upon your life and is willing and ready to work through your heart, through your hands, through your feet as we build the kingdom. May it be so, and may all God's people say, Amen. Will you please stand with me as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayer of the people of Form 3, now on page 387 of the Red Book. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. And that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful and servants of their word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That they may be justice. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. 
Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will. In those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we come to repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. We may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Will you stand with me, please? The peace of the Lord be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us, giving himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for in the multitude of your saints you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you, many and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. are the holy gifts of God for the holy people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth now in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.